notes, and I would like to thank uh, Cecil Fotakis, whom I had met uh, in the past on two occasions, also to, to, to invite me. So uh, I, will, I will try to explain the, the role and the impact of the French naval operations uh, in, the, in the Eastern Mediterranean uh, during the First World War. And I have restricted, actually, the topic to the, the Balkan theater, because I won't be discussing uh, the, the, the southern eastern Mediterranean. Uh,
Italy uh, decided to remain neutral. So the French fleet under Vuela Perrier entered the Adriatic, trying to lure the uh, to lure the uh, Austro-Hungarian fleet uh, into battle. But the Austrian admiral, uh, Admiral uh, Anton, Anton, had said that his first objective was to preserve his fleet intact. So he refused combat, except for an action with cruiser Zenta, which was destroyed. You can use the presenter, sir. The what? You can use the presenter. You think that? Yeah, yeah. It works. Uh, <clears throat> so then, the French objective, the first French objective was to capture the base of Cataro uh, in, uh, in the, the Cotor, in the Adriatic, but since it was heavily fortified, France decided instead of blocking uh, the Strait of Otranto and blocking the Strait of Otranto uh, in between Brindisi and the Greek island of Corfu. And, uh, the, but the French Navy had as another mission to uh, resupply uh, Montenegro. Montenegro had sided with Serbia at the beginning of the war. So whose operations led to some losses on the French side? Uh, but this was an, an important aspect of the French operation in the area. And the other aspect in the Mediterranean was to make sure that uh, all the uh, uh, transit of raw material for the Allies would not be uh, attacked and also uh, to try to actually uh, intercept the uh, raw materials that were destined to uh, Germany and Austro-Hungary. Obviously, from the very beginning of the war, uh, the, the maritime traffic of uh, the German and Austro-Hungarian uh, flag had ceased completely, so there was no question that uh, no, none of those vessels would be met at sea, but uh, under neutral flag, uh, the, their, uh, uh, the traffic was continuing uh, towards uh, those two countries. So the, the, the declaration, the 1856 declaration of Paris, that, uh, was still uh, in place uh, at the time. The, the ships were controlled uh, at Gibraltar by the British and also just three miles outside of, uh, um, of Suez, uh, of Port Said, excuse me, of Port Said uh, in, in the Eastern Mediterranean. So among the British and the French, there were uh, disputes on the, the, the various uh, raw materials uh, that should have been on the list of contraband. On the, at the beginning, oil was not on the list of contraband, uh, in part not to antagonize the United States because it's not that oil had a German uh, subsidiary, the Dutch Petroleum, uh, from Hamburg. And in October 14, they increased the list of, of contraband to uh, include oil, uh, rubber, copper, and in December, the British and the French harmonized their, their voting practices, but still, there was no uh, good connection between the British and the French Navy, uh, no, no permanent liaison, and even within France, there was no good liaison between the Navy and the customs, so it was not, not very efficient. The big change was obviously in February of 1915, when the, the Germany, for the first time, proclaimed submarine warfare, and also uh, the, the response by the Allies, which was an economic blockade of Germany. So the issue on the Eastern Mediterranean was the Bulgarian trade, because uh, uh, at that time, as you, uh, as you know better than I, uh, Bulgaria had an access to the Asian Sea, with the port of Dede Agach. But the, the railroad from Dede Agach to uh, Bulgaria, to the internal, was the Ottoman Railroad. So it was going through Turkey, through the Ottoman Empire, before bifurcating again uh, into Bulgaria. So all the cargoes that were disembarked uh, in Dede Agach were going through Turkey anyway. And so it was difficult for the Bulgarians uh, to deny Turkey uh, uh, 
cargoes because otherwise uh, Turkey would block all the, the traffic, all the Bulgarian uh, trade. And what was very embarrassing is that the French company, the Messagerie Maritime, was also uh, carrying some goods for the enemy. Uh, so uh, this was another uh, embarrassing aspect. Obviously, the Allies had been trying from the very beginning to find a way to, to break the, the, the stalemate. And uh, the idea uh, was to try what Winston Churchill called a, a diversion, uh, just like during the Seven Years' War, when there was the, uh, the, the secondary front of Canada and India who decided the fate of the war. So this was the, the general idea for uh, this operation of the Dardanelles, which was supported in France by uh, General Franchet d'Espéré and by the then uh, Justice Minister, a future Prime Minister, Aristide Briand, who had supported the idea to, to attack Turkey. And um, the idea would be that a success would, would convince Bulgaria and Greece to side uh, on the uh, Entente side. Obviously, it has been discussed yesterday that Russia objected to Greece uh, joining in such an operation. So, what was probably a, a mistake from the Western side was the fact that Churchill ordered in November of 1914 a test against the Turkish defenses in the Netherlands, and there was uh, a, a brief bombardment uh, by uh, two British battle cruisers and, and two French pre dreadnoughts, which just is that bombardment just raised the awareness of the Turkish side and uh, they uh, started to improve their defenses and also to uh, work on the minefields. And uh, also France lost a submarine in January 1915 and apparently the other side, the Turkish side and the Germans were able to get the French codes on board the submarine. Um, so, at that time, the issue of the Gage was becoming more complicated. France was trying to appease Bulgaria by trying to buy food from Bulgaria for the Dardanelles expedition. But it was uh, evident that Bulgaria was not uh, the good faith of Bulgaria, could not be trusted. Really, because uh, some Bulgarian, Russian-made Bulgarian mines had been found uh, on the Turkish side, and on the other hand, uh, the Bulgarian Navy had refueled apparently a German submarine uh, in the Aegean. So uh, obviously, Bulgaria was going on the on the other side, and uh, the Allies decided mounted uh, at first as you as you know they were hoping to submit uh, Turkey to uh, subdue Turkey by naval bombardment by shore bombardment and, and without necessarily conduct, conducting a, a land operation and, and this uh, attempts uh, culminated with the, 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 the 19th of February bombardment and also the, the 18th of March bombardment and the 18th of March bombardment uh, was obviously a failure uh, although apparently the Turkish coastal batteries suffered from the bombardment every day but the, the minefield that the Turks had been able to, 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 to lay without the Allies to be aware uh, proved deadly for the Bouvet and damaged a, a, a British uh, uh, battleship. So uh, the Allies at that point realized that it was not the, the, the right option. But it's of interest because the, the mine warfare clearance uh, was not successful on the Allied side because at the beginning they were using civilian crews who didn't want to clear the mines under fire. And uh, they also were not good at, at uh, uh, knowing, uh, learning about the Turkish minefield. But if they had been able to solve those two problems, perhaps the, the uh, issue, uh, the, the end would have been different. So obviously, uh, Mudros 
uh, became uh, the advent space for uh, uh, landing, and those are some photographs of the French uh, in Moudreau's army transport in the middle, uh, French troops in the village of Moudreau's and also French troops disembarked for that operation. And uh, so the landing took place, the French contribution was at first a, a diversion on the Asian uh, side uh, in order to neutralize some guns and, and to confuse the Turks. But obviously, as you know, it had been chosen to land on the European uh, side. And in that context, Moodles became an evacuation center uh, for the injured. And so the French hospitals uh, French hospitals were established uh, in Woodrow's. There was a Navy French hospital in order to put uh, people in, in quarantine if this was uh, necessary. Sanitary, me sanitary measures that were taken were good enough to prevent uh, the breakout and, and the spreading of uh, the epidemics uh, that were feared. And the number of injured and evacuees was such that France had to reinforce the, the, the number, augment the number of uh, hospital ships that were taken uh, to uh, Woodrow's. Uh, and on each trip, you had about 200 patients. And obviously, when the Allies uh, realized that they were unable uh, to uh, establish uh, the beachhead successfully, and they decided to re-embark. This re-embarkment went through uh, Mood Rose. The French losses in the, in the Dardanelles expeditions are estimated at about 40,000 killed and 120,000 uh, injured. What were the reasons for the failure? Well, what I would point it out to the inadequate uh, mine clearance uh, in the strait, and obviously other factors that have been uh, noted by others, the lack of core facilities, the lack of operating craft, the lack of uh, armored vehicles to cross the, the barbed wire, and also the use of uh, armor piercing uh, projectiles uh, for uh, fire support that were not efficient. And so obviously uh, all the difficulties of the Allies have made their cause much less uh, impressive for Greece and for Bulgaria, and actually Bulgaria entered the war before the end of the operation. But with the entry into the war of Bulgaria, it meant that uh, ammunitions would be able to cross into Bulgaria and to, to Turkey, and that uh, the uh, exhausted defenses, Turkish defenses, would be resupplied in ammunition. And also an important factor uh, on the 23rd of May of 1915 was the entry into the war of Italy on the side of the Entente. But of course, this uh, entry of Italy, uh, <coughs> Italy had its own objectives. First objective, the Italians had already taken advantage of the situation to occupy in December of 1914 uh, the uh, Albanian, Albanian port of Vlore, uh, uh, and, and also the, uh, the Italians had negotiated their entry into the war and they wanted uh, history on the other side. Uh, but they had not been promised uh, a few. And uh, the French Navy at that point was hoping to uh, conduct large scale of operations against the Austro Hungarian fleet together. With, with the Italians. But the Italians had another vision. They didn't want to risk their battleships uh, because they didn't want to be uh, af to affect the balance of power vis-a-vis uh, -vis France and, and England in the Mediterranean. So they resorted to their uh, very daring uh, mass uh, for a maritime guerrilla against uh, the other side, against the Australian guard. Um, the uh, uh, Italians were also tasked to resupply Montenegro, but at the end, Montenegro was invaded, uh, and the Austrians were really able to secure uh, the environment of their base of Catao. Uh, in the past, 
the French Navy had been able to place guns during one week on top of the mountain, Lufthansa, uh, overlooking Qatar with shell during one week at base. So basically, if the Australians were able to, to conquer. And obviously, uh, what, one of the most uh, significant event of the uh, uh, summer of 1915 well, the arrival of the uh, German submersible U-21 U in uh, Constantinople came as a complete surprise. And it came also as a proof that the Otranto barrier uh, that had been established uh, south of the Adriatic was not efficient against submarines. You know, actually, only one submarine was caught in the nets that had been moored to try to catch submarines. So at that point, France, uh, actually, the French uh, naval uh, intelligence uh, had absolutely no knowledge, no understanding of the submarine situation. This was what was written in an internal not, note. During the summer of 1915, the growing activity of German submarines caused great concern to the Department of the Navy when we found that we did not possess any information, even approximately, uh, on the number of new enemy vessels they had granted their potential bases etc. So it was really uh, an extremely serious issue and to address that issue the French naval intelligence was reorganized with the creation of a secret uh, organization that was tasked to go to neutral countries including Greece to try to uh, deny uh, resupply to uh, German and Austrian submarines and also to collect information and France also established 27 maritime information bureaus uh, around France to collect information on submarines and intelligence staffs uh, on, uh, in, in its uh, naval squadrons with uh, the ability to go ashore to collect information. And as I said, uh, they, they, they dispatched naval attaches in neutral countries and most notably in Greece uh, for this uh, objective. So the, the attaché who was sent to Greece was uh, Maximilien Roquefeuille, who starts to create an intelligence organization in liaison with uh, the British and the Italian attaché who were already active. He had 13 officers under him in, in, in Athens, but he was reporting directly to the Navy Minister, Admiral Lacat. So he created a difficulty with the local Navy uh, commander. Admiral Dartige du Fournay would replace um, uh, Admiral Bois de la Perrière as the head of the first uh, naval arm. And his efforts, uh, he was actually paying uh, informants and he was rewarding them by uh, uh, a tenfold uh, uh, increase of their pay in case. Of, uh, of, an in, of an information that would lead to a successful attack. And so uh, he had a very, uh, a very active network uh, in Greece. And they succeeded, the combination of those allied uh, attaches succeeded in reducing, slowing down the refueling of German and Austrian submarines uh, from Greece. Obviously at the time, uh, uh, Bulgaria, which was nicknamed the Prussia of the Balkans, uh, had decided to attack. Uh, of course, the objective was Macedonia on the one hand and the Romanian province of Dobruja, uh, who were the goals. Uh, France, as you know, at that point had uh, sent most of its forces uh, to uh, Salonika, to Greece, with the support of the Prime Minister Venizelos, but the Prime Minister Venizelos had been forced to resign. So when those forces arrived uh, in Saloni, uh, uh, at that moment, the French government, the Greek government, was suddenly hostile uh, to those forces. And uh, so uh, those French forces in Saloni were uh, there, in fact, to try to convince the Greek to join, but they felt also besieged by the Greek forces uh, in the vicinity. And the new Prime Minister, Alexandre Zaimis, uh, was described by the French General Sarai 
as someone who would do everything against us with the greatest courtesy. And uh, in, uh, on 16 of October 1915, uh, France and Bulgaria exchanged uh, declarations of war, and uh, the hostilities against Bulgaria started on October 22nd. So at this moment, with the uh, Serbian, uh, with the Bulgarian attack on Serbia, the situation of the Serbian army uh, became uh, disaster. First of all, the, the supply lines by railroad uh, had been cut, and uh, so France negotiated with Serbia to prevent Serbia from uh, negotiating an armistice. And uh, Serbia actually uh, accepted that its troops would be transported first uh, to uh, some Albanian ports and, and to Corfu, which had been occupied by group by France. And uh, later, a plan was made to transport those forces to Salonika when Greece refused uh, the entry of the Serbian uh, troops, uh, the crossing of the Serbian troops into territory. So uh, one of the most extraordinary aspects of that operation is that there was no casualties at all. Uh, France was able to uh, evacuate all those troops uh, and didn't lose a single ship and was able to deceive uh, the uh, central side by arresting uh, all their spies, by uh, detaining the, the consuls and also by sailing far from the coast and uh, avoiding the mines that had been led up uh, by uh, the centrals. <coughs> the issue was then to know if uh, France and the Army d'Orient could take the offensive. Problem was that General Sahai didn't have enough troops on, from the French, uh, enough French troops, and also that the Italians and as the uh, British uh, had been instructed not to take action, you know, so it was a, a bit, a bit difficult for him. And at this point, the, the issue of uh, the uh, attitude of the uh, great king uh, became central. You know, the, the, the French Prime Minister Briand was rather supportive of the king, but the Navy Minister was Lacasse, but Lacasse was totally exasperated by the king and was calling for pressure, and you know, with the surrender of, of the fortress of Rupel in May of 1916, the Entente asked to make some pressure with the first planned naval demonstration. Uh, that demonstration was postponed when the king seemed to uh, give some guarantees, but again, when uh, German and Bulgarian troops advanced in Macedonia, again, the Allies decided to mount uh, a demonstration and a squadron was sent to, the, to, to Salamis and, and the Pirates. There were anti-French demonstrations and uh, more negotiations uh, with the king. Uh, instructions to Dartige du Fournay uh, to seize the Pirates and uh, again uh, a meeting uh, between a French uh, parliament uh, member of parliament with the king who sort of was trying to, to, to give new reassurances but armed incidents uh, broke out and uh, finally uh, Admiral David de Fournay decided to land uh, troops uh, in uh, Athens and this led to the 1st of December uh, incidents and actual uh, sharing between the uh, forces on both sides with the losses of uh, 62 French uh, soldiers. So the French squadron retaliated and was able to score a hit uh, not far from the Royal Palace and, and this forced the king to, to surrender six of his ten guns. Guns where, you know, the, it was just... Uh, Sir, can you conclude in three minutes, please? Excellent. Okay. So, at, as a consequence, Dartige, the Dufournay was sacked, Rockford, the, the, the uh, attaché, was accused of being, of having created the Venizelis faction, which was probably a bit exaggerated, but a number of Venizelis were actually paid by him, and uh, the king, in the end, as you know, was forced to... Uh, 
to resign. At that point, there were new threats from the Black Sea. Uh, one was, of course, the attack, uh, uh, preferably referred to by the, Su the Sultan Selim in the Middle East. And the other uh, was the uh, Russian fleet, which was now under German control. So it was decided to move mines at the entrance of the Dardanelles uh, for that reason and to position French battleships in Moodrose. Uh, uh, under Admiral Dario. <coughs> at, at that point also, uh, General Franchet Despere was able to launch his offensive on the Salonic Front, to break the Salonic Front, and to uh, launch a successful uh, two sectoral attack. And at the end, uh, as you well know, Turkey sought uh, an armistice but signed it with England. France was not part of it. Of course, it took place in Moudros. And uh, the Allied forces and squadrons left Moudros to for Constantinople. Uh, obviously, uh, the treaties were uh, not satisfactory for the different parties, uh, the Italians and the new Yugoslavs, of course, in the Adriatic. But on, the, uh, on this front, it's of interest to see that Franchi Espere, who had arrived in Bulgaria and who uh, occupied Bulgaria, uh, had become sort of supportive of Bulgaria and was very disappointed by the results of the Treaty of Louis of 1919 uh, that deprived uh, Bulgaria of uh, uh, Trace, uh, Dobrucha, and Macedonia. He didn't want them to lose all of that, or some of it, but not all of it. So I thank you. Uh, well, as an aftermath, I have to mention uh, that camp that was established in Woodrose. Uh, in 1920 for the Wrangel uh, forces uh, and which was uh, at that point the last French involvement on the uh, island of Muros. So I thank you for your attention. Uh, the last speaker of this session is Professor Jeffrey Bill. Uh, he's, an, he's an emeritus professor of maritime studies at King's College of London and the chairman of the Corbett Center for Maritime Policy yeah, Studies. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, professor yeah. Till will be presenting on in search of manual, the British approach to build 